So I like to make a little video about one of these Deutz engines. It's a F4M1011F. I bought a skid steer with this motor in it. So there were, the seller didn't have any history on it. If it ran, if it, what happened to it. So I got it as a cat in the hat type of deal. So I've seen a lot of videos going over little bits and pieces of what could be this and that. So here I just like to go over the whole overview of what I learned. It's quite an interesting little diesel engine with the timing belt, which makes it really funky to figure out when it's not running. So when if you buy an engine like this or a machine that you have no history on it, the seller doesn't know what happened or what's going on. First thing is pull the valve cover off and check how many bent rods you got and if you have any broken rockers. Most likely the belt broke on this machine, bent the push rods and the rocker arms got broken. And then they reinstalled the new belt and it never started again by the looks of it. All right, the trick is because it's a timing belt machine, this, well, this pulley is not indexed or keyed to the camshaft at all. So once you loosen this bolt here, this pulley will free spin on the camshaft with no index position. So, and there's no timing marks anywhere, anywhere on this engine. So the only way you can time this engine is when you buy a new timing belt, it comes with the timing pins. So they're exactly the same. The crank and the cam timing pin is the same. So the cam pin goes on this side of the engine, that 10 millimeter bolt, you remove it and you put this in all the way in where you by hand carefully rotate the cam until the hole in the camshaft lines up with this hole and then you would by hand screw it in and then you can tighten it with the flat screwdriver. And then to time the crank, you have to manually put the crank in the top dead center of the first cylinder. And then you have a 10 millimeter bolt you remove and you put the pin in and then you would turn the engine clockwise gent. So you would find the top dead center, go counterclockwise, maybe an eighth of a turn, put the pin in and then rotate the crank until you bump against the pin. And then that's how you time it. And then hopefully when you put the timing belt on, the teeth on the timing belt will sit in the correct place with the cam pin and the crank pin in position and the crank bumped against the crank pin. If for some reason the teeth do not line up, you will have to loosen this pulley you have to hold this with the 32 millimeters or 36 millimeter wrench and don't put any force on the camshaft because you'll bend the pin, the alignment pin. On this engine, it lined up so I didn't have to remove this bolt, loosen it. The teeth lined up nicely and it made a nice tight belt on this side. You have to use a belt tension tool, but for some reason on this engine it has something sticking out right here. You can't even get the belt tool on there, so I just eyeballed it. And then also the new idler pulley is installed this way. Do not put it 180 degrees around because there's a bolt that sticks out there and it will damage the pulley. There's quite a few videos on setting this part. Also, on this engine, because it sat for a long time, the fuel adjustment, fuel rack, the fueling rack for acceleration was jammed in towards the back direction and it was stuck. This fuel shut off solenoid works backwards when power is applied to it the solenoid actually comes out and it pushes a little teeter-totter that goes this way. So when it's in no power applied right now, the fuel rack is pushed all the way towards the back of the engine and that shuts off the fuel. So when you apply power to the solenoid, 
this claw that pushes the fuel rack is removed out of the way and now your governor mechanism that's behind this cover pushes against the fuel rack for when you do when you use the accelerator so first thing you got to do is if you get an engine there's no history on pull the valve cover off see if anything's bent broken next you pretty much have to get a new set a belt and these check the timing make sure it's perfect also pull the solenoid off and see if the fuel rack plate moves towards the engine freely and when you push it with your finger it should slide super easy it has a very light spring it should slide like butter if it doesn't for any reason there's something wrong with the one of the injection pumps on this particular engine the number two pump was jammed in the off position so it held the fuel rack in the off position so none of the pumps as you crank would pump any fuel so I started pulling off this one was fine this one's fine as soon as I pulled this one off the fuel rack sprang forward and so I knew so I had to take this pump apart completely it was just stuck there was no rust in it but for some reason it was stuck so I took it apart moved around the plunger the spring in and out WD-40 and it started working so then I reassembled it also there's a pr procedure for reassembling there's a few pages about it online so if you search for fuel injection pump removal installation there's a little trick to that also but um reassembled it this is my little syringe for uh to see how much fuel it's pulling in and if it's actually pulling it in and reassembled it and then to prime this engine what i did is i took the exhaust valves and turned the lash adjustment screw in enough to where it held the exhaust valve open a tiny bit just it maybe like a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth it's not enough for the piston to hit it but it keeps the valve open to where the starter will crank the engine much faster and then it primes faster also so once they all primed kept the nuts loose on the injectors started squirting fuel tightened the nuts and then two cranks over and it started perfectly fine so yeah so interesting little engine once you know what you're doing it makes life a lot easier but i've been at it for probably a couple weeks trying to figure out how to get this thing started so basically overview most important thing is pull the valve cover off make sure everything looks good there absolute must just buy a new timing belt with these check make sure the timing is perfectly on if it's not you got to put it where it has to be if it's not exactly where it is it'll never start also pull the solenoid off and that's a good reason good time to check when you pull it off put power 12 volts to it make sure the little claw moves this way when power is applied and then also with your finger in there push against the fuel rod rack make sure all the way towards the back of the engine is fuel shut off that's engine off it springs out when you're starting the engine there's a light spring that keeps it at full throttle as soon as it starts the governor takes over and pushes the rack towards the back of the engine to maintain the whatever idle speed is set wherever the set screw is for that and then what you can also do once you start it you can actually manually take like a tool and take the fuel rack and pull it towards you and that'll accelerate the engine and to shut it off just manually push the fuel rack back in and it'll stop the engine 100 percent but yeah this is it unique little guy but runs super nice no smoke put it in the machine in a few weeks and see how it goes hopefully this uh, helps somebody